Welcome back to Combat Mission, for a while at least. A topic that comes up on a semi-regular basis on the Discord, the forums and in the comments section is how well the crews of tanks and IFVs can actually see from inside their vehicles. Usually because it's really frustrating when your tank seems to be completely blind. There are obviously limitations to the spotting system in CM, and it does occasionally spit out the kind of results that make you want to pull your hair out, but at the same time, armoured fighting vehicles of all kinds have limits to their situational awareness. Combat Mission models this, but it's much easier to demonstrate how restrictive vision in armoured vehicles can be from a first person perspective, so we're going to hop out of CM and jump into Steel Beasts. Steel Beasts is basically a tank simulator. It's used as a training tool in various armies around the world, and it accurately represents the internal systems of a number of vehicles. One of these is everybody's favourite, the BMP-2. Sitting in the gunner's seat here, you really can't see very much of what's going on outside. Directly in front we have two eyepieces. The one on the left is the night sight, and the one on the right is the day sight. Obviously we can see out through that, but we don't have a very wide field of view, we're tunnel visioning in with the main gun sight. Coming back out of the day sight, we also have this eyepiece on the right for the roof mounted 85A ADGM. Once we open the armoured shutter of the optic, again, we've got a pretty narrow field of view. Finally, around the edge of the gunner's position, we also have some viewing prisms. One on the right, two on the left, and one in the top of the hatch overhead, which looks backwards. And in keeping with the other sights, none of these provide a particularly good field of view. If we switch to the commander's position, we have a similar picture, though it's now a moving picture because the gunner has reverted to AI control and is scanning for targets. We have a cupola mounted periscope in front that we can swing around, a viewing prism on either side, and then another rearward looking one overhead in the hatch. Again, same narrow fields of view. It's definitely much, much inferior to opening up. If we do that and stick our head up, we lose the protection of the vehicle's armour, but we have a much better idea of what's going on, including the fact that there's been a squad of infantry within spinning distance the entire time and we never saw them. If they were hostile, we would already be on fire, or we would have gotten our head shot off when we opened the hatch. Of course, we probably could have seen them if we were paying attention, this is just a demonstration after all, but it's arguably not as simple as that. While we have quite a few ways of seeing the outside world, it's not like that automatically gives us good situational awareness all the way around the vehicle. To start with, we obviously can't look through more than one of these sights or viewing prisms at once, and even if we are looking through them, we're not guaranteed to spot an enemy who doesn't want to be seen, especially as the range increases those infantrymen hanging around out there are doing just that. They're not trying to hide or take cover, they're just loitering out in the open. The vehicle crew might also be busy. The commander might be on the radio, he might be messing around looking at maps, he's also got to consider where he wants the driver to go next, he's got to keep an eye on the other vehicles in his platoon. The gunner is potentially not quite as busy, but he is probably going to spend most of his time looking through his primary sight and tunnel visioning off to the front as well as having to work his weapon controls and pay attention to the vehicle commander's instructions. Then, even if one member of the vehicle crew does see something, they need to communicate that to their crewmates, which isn't always the easiest thing to do. And finally, in a combat situation, all of this is done under stress, and that makes it immensely more difficult, especially in something like a BMP-2, that has the fatal combination of thin armour and lots of fuel and ammunition in close proximity. Of course, the BMP is a pretty old design by the time we're getting into the modern combat mission titles, Shock Force or Black Sea, and more recent vehicles, or vehicles that have put more emphasis on crew visibility and spotting, can perform significantly better thanks to more viewing prisms, thermal images, optics with higher magnification and or resolution, remote cameras, and even more basic options like the open, protected hatch position on the Abrams. So while vision is always going to be restricted inside tanks and IFVs, some vehicles can see a lot better than others. So that's a little bit of insight into why vehicles in combat mission can seem to struggle to see things. It's a lot more difficult than it might seem at first glance. 
Hope you found this interesting and useful. Hope that gives a little context for those blind BMP moments out there. And I'll catch you in the next video.